Hi, Mr. Richmond. This is your Integrated Math 2, Unit 5.3 and 5.4 Lesson Summary. Um, first thing I want to start off by uh, saying is how we are going to skip a few sections is in regards to videos here. You'll notice that I'm not doing a video for 5.1, 5.2. Um, this entire chapter really is a review of some concepts you did in Math 1. Um, so if you need help with uh, Unit 5.1 and 5.2, you want to look at the Math 1 videos that we have online. Um, look at Unit 13. Um, and it's kind of scattered throughout that, but if you look at the first few sections there, it should help you with that. So it's writing congruence statements and kind of just initially exposing you to um, some different theorems for proving triangles are congruent. Um, and you've actually seen all of these before, side, 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 angle, side. Uh, we needed triangle congruence in Math 1. The only difference really between what you did in Math 1 and Math 2 is now we're going to take these ideas and some of these problems and rather than just try to find out if they're congruent and kind of um, informally say how they are, we're going to do full proofs for them. So let's review those theorems real quick. Uh, the first one is side-side-side congruence theorem. Um, that states that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So we do need to have each corresponding side be congruent to each other for this to work. So I can, can prove that two triangles are congruent without actually even looking at the angles as long as they have all three sides. Our other uh, congruence theorem is side angle side. This one you actually find in 5-4, this one in 5-3. Um, side angle side states if two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent, and a big key word here is included angle, to the corresponding two sides and the included angle of the second, then the triangles are congruent. So it would look more like this. You have a side congruent to its corresponding side, an angle congruent to its corresponding angle, and a side congruent to its corresponding side. The big key here to use side angle side, please make sure you know this, is that the included angle is the angle you have, the angle in between the two sides. So you should have a, a little V of congruence, side, angle, side, all forming the same side. So the sides that form the angle you have to have. So just be sure about that because that's probably the number one mistake with using side angle side. Okay, um, with that we'll jump right into a proof. Um, we'll do two proofs. I got one here and I got one on the backboard. Um, that will probably be the majority of your tests will be proof dominant so you're really going to want to really practice those. Um, I don't have time to do you know, all different proofs you could potentially see but I'm going to do one of each, one that's going to use side side side, one that will use side angle side and I'll talk about the, the tips and strategies that I suggest for doing proofs so that you can be successful. If you just jump into them and start doing them, it can end poorly. So always plan, 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 plan. Planning ahead is big and marking what you have. So here's our situation. We have two triangles uh, kind of overlapping formed together here. It's giving us that AB is congruent to DF. My first tip of the day for proofs, mark your diagram up. AB congruent to DF. So I'm gonna use a congruent symbol for AB and DF. And my other tip, is to go ahead and try and give yourself a quick sketch of each triangle separately. And this kind of helps you not miss anything in regards to overlap. So if I kind of took these apart, it'd look more like that. Here's ABC overlapping DEF. And AB should be congruent to DF. And it lets me see now I have a side. Uh, the other information it gives me is that AC, which is this long part of the triangle here, is congruent to DE, the other long side. Now I'm going to mark it here as well so that you can see it's the entire side that's congruent, not just this one segment. Okay, that's important to not get mixed up. And I can see here now I have two sides. I have no angles. I have no info about parallel. Um, I don't really see angles that I'm going to be able to find. So I'm probably going to need to use side, side, side somehow. And as I look here, I see that the two triangles share a segment BC that's the same. So it is potentially possible that these are uh, the same length, but I've got to kind of come up with a way to find that. And so I know that BE plus EC equals this length, segment addition postulate from chapter two, and FC plus EC equals this full length. So I at least know part of them are congruent. So I'm going to start by trying to play with that a little bit and write that out and see if anything comes about. So my first segment is BE plus EC equals 
BC. So I just use the segment addition posture to say, hey, this plus this equals this. I'm hoping it's going to open up some options. The other statement I know is the other side. Um, FC plus EC equals EF. And that's saying FC plus CE equals the whole thing EF. And by writing those statements, knowing that there's some overlap there, a lot of times that can end up showing that they're congruent because you know some other statements up here about congruence. And the other thing I know up here is that BE is congruent to FC. And in my diagram, then BE is congruent to FC. And if this is the same as this, and this they're sharing anyways, then they are indeed congruent, but I've got to find a way to show that uh, in my proof. So, since BE is the same thing as FC, BE and FC are the same thing, I really can sub one or the other in. And so I'm going to say, since these are interchangeable, I'm going to make the top statement FC plus EC equals BC instead, because those are interchangeable. And so now I have these two updated statements using substitution, I substitute BE into that, to come up with the statement here, FC plus EC equals EF, FC plus EC equals BC. Since FC plus EC equals EF and FC plus EC equals BC, then again by substitution, these two must be the same. So I now know EF equals BC, therefore EF is congruent to BC, so EF is congruent to BC, EF congruent to BC, and I actually have all three sides now. But I did have to do a little work with segment addition postulate to kind of get there. So now, formalizing it into a proof, you typically want to start with your givens, your easy information. So I'll start there. I'm going to just copy our givens down. Um, AB is congruent to DF, and AC is congruent to DE, and we'll say BE is congruent to FC. And our reason is just given. That was given information. Okay, so I started with that. Now I need to formalize this last statement here. It's ultimately what I'm trying to get to so I can say the triangles are congruent. And I need to show the segment addition postulate and my substitution to make that happen. So I'm going to write my original. B E plus E C equals B C. And I'll go ahead and write the other one as well. F C plus E C equals E F. And really all I'm stating there is the segment addition postulate to say that those two can add together like that. So that'll be my reason. Segment addition postulate. I didn't give myself a lot of room here, so I'm going to abbreviate slightly. So two steps so far. Um, what I did after that as we were kind of brainstorming was, since I stated already up here that BE plus FC, or BE and FC are congruent, I can substitute them interchangeably. I can make BE, FC, or FC, BE, and I kind of rewrote the statement. So I'm going to rewrite the top one as FC plus EC equals BC. And all I did there was substitute that in, so I'm going to call that substitution. And then from there, I'll kind of just, you don't have to do this in your actual proofs. Um, as you, if you do flow proof, you might. But I'm going to just kind of show you what I did. So I substituted that in to get to this statement. And then I'm taking these two statements here, and combining them to make a new statement, EF equals BC, EF equals BC. And the reason for that is, again, substitution. And I'll take a moment to talk about pickiness here with grading. Technically, when you write segments and you're doing addition with them, you don't have to put the 
the symbol, it's just BE plus EC equals BC whenever you're talking about values, measures. So I don't technically need to have the segment signs over the top of them. Um, that's why here I wrote EF equals BC and got rid of it. Some teachers are a little bit pickier and they'll say, well, now that you have that, you need to say a fifth step, EF is congruent to BC, definition of congruence, because if things are equal, they're congruent. Um, but it does make steps a little longer, so some teachers get leaning on that. They know that if equal means congruent, so if you're showing something like this, they may let you just say EF is congruent to BC because of substitution. So you just kind of have to check the teacher and see what their pickiness is. In some of the previous videos, I did it much more picky. For these, I'm going to kind of lighten up a little bit about it. Um, last step. So now, Given off this information, AB is congruent to DF gives me a side. AC congruent to DE gives me a side. And now I've finally done the EF is congruent to BC, so I have three sides in a row. That's enough to say the triangles are congruent. So I can prove my statement. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DFE by the side, 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 triangle congruence, and again, I'm abbreviating theorem. Side, 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 triangle congruence theorem. So again, as long as you take your time, you brainstorm steps there, um, you use previous postulates that you've learned, it should go pretty smooth. And again, it's not the only way to do that proof. The orders can change. You might um, go in a slightly different order and list it as long as the steps are there and your reasoning is there, it's, it's going to be okay. All right, next proof. Let's go ahead and get started. It says, Given Wx is congruent to Zy, and then Wx is parallel to Zy, they want us to prove that these two split triangles are congruent. We've got triangle Wxz and triangle Yxz. So let's start by marking our diagram. I have Wx is congruent to Zy, and that Wx is parallel to Zy. So, I'm going to start by drawing them separately. W, Z, X, congruent, parallel, and Z, Y, X, and Z, Y is congruent and parallel. Okay? And looking at this now, I'm going to kind of look for other information I have. I see something right off the bat. The middle segment, ZX, is part of both triangles. So ZX here is the exact same ZX that's here. So those two pieces are congruent to each other. So I actually have a side and a side now, um, which gives me possible if I can somehow know that WX is congruent to XY, that'll give me side, side, side. Um, or if I can get an interior or an inscribed angle in the middle here, I'd be, be good to go. Or the included angle, sorry. Um, so, they gave me parallel. It'd be odd for them to give me the fact that they're parallel unless I was supposed to use that in some way or could use that in some way. So that's what I'm going to look at. So I have parallel line, parallel line, and something coming through it here. And if you remember back to your earlier chapters, that's parallel lines cut by a transversal. And when that happens, you have a couple rules. Corresponding angles are congruent. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent. Well, if that's true, I have an angle here and an angle here that could be used in my triangle. And those angles are in the interior of the parallel lines, so interior, and they're on alternate sides of the transversal. So these are alternate interior angles, and I know that they're congruent when lines are parallel. So that gives me an angle now. So now I have side, angle, side, and I'm able to, to run with that. The only big thing I had to look here is that the alternate tier angles are congruent. So I'm going to need to use that in my proof. So I feel pretty comfortable now starting it. I'm going to start here with my givens. I'm going to say Wx is congruent to Zy. And there's a couple ways. Some, some students like to just throw all their uh, givens in right off the bat. Others like to wait until they're going to use it. Um, and, and that's good too because it kind of helps support your reasoning a little better, especially with doing something like a flow proof. So I'm going to kind of try it that way this time and, and see how you like that. So Wx is congruent to Zy is a given, and that gives me one side. Now, 
I'm going to go to the second statement that we kind of did. That was one of our easier ones. Zx is congruent to Zx. So Zx is congruent to Zx. And we know that because of the reflexive property. When you're just saying something is equal to itself or congruent to itself, it's the reflexive property. And that gives me another side. Okay. And my third step, I'm now going to show that the alternate interior angles are congruent. Before I can do that, I have to say the lines are parallel, because that only exists when the lines are parallel. So I'll use my other given. So Wx is parallel to Zy. That was a given. And then that idea is going to lead to my fourth idea, which is that angle W x z w x z is congruent to y z w and the reason for that alternate interior angle theorem Now I have an angle, and obviously we told you all through math one, ASS is no bueno, not allowed to say that. SSA is not one of them. So you want to make sure that you're choosing the correct one. Even if your little lettering on the side doesn't equate, we have it as side angle side, with the uh, angle in the middle being where it's supposed to be there. So we will now say that triangle WXZ is congruent to triangle YXZ. That was what we're trying to prove, and that is true because of the side, angle, side, triangle, congruence theorem. Okay, and in our next video, we'll show you the other two possible triangle congruence theorems, and we'll do a couple proofs with those. And then the big challenge on the test will be, obviously, you're not going to know which one to use at the time, so the setup's going to be key, and really just looking for any of the four that will work for your per, uh, particular situation. Thank you and good luck.